Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we'll be understanding about recurrent neural network architecture and we'll also understand the forward propagation over time. Now, why I'm saying forward propagation over time? Because that is the main functionality behind RNN, behind the working of the RNN. So we'll try to understand what exactly it is. Guys, if you want to know about RNN, first of all, you need to know a general architecture of RNN. What exactly is an RNN? So this is how an RNN architecture looks like. Here, this is my input, okay? And this input may be of any number of dimensions, okay? Any number of dimension basically means I can have any number of features, right? And then this is my hidden layer. Here I can have any number of hidden neurons, okay? And finally, I have my output. Now, along with this particular output, we also get output with respect to time. That basically means, suppose, uh, I want to solve a NLP use case, which is of sentiment analysis. Now in sentiment analysis, we have a sentence and we try to determine whether that is a positive sentence or a negative sentence or a positive review or a negative review. So usually whenever I consider a sentence, suppose this is my sentence one and inside this sentence, suppose I have four words like this food is bad. Okay. And according to this, I have my output which will definitely say it as zero because this particular review is a negative review, right? Now, if I take this particular example, our RNN at each and every time, like at t is equal to one, will pre-process one word. Then at t is equal to two, will pre-process the second word. Now, what will happen as we are passing, suppose in the first case, we'll pass one word, right? The pre-processing will happen over here. And then it will give you an output. And apart from that, for the next word, right, whatever was the output for the first word, that will also be sent to this particular neuron, uh, new, uh, recurrent neural network. And because of this, the sequence information is kept. Okay. Now I'll, I'll make you understand what exactly I'm telling you. I'll try to expand this whole diagram over here. Okay. This is how my whole diagram will look like. Now see this. This is my general architecture of a recurrent neural network. So I told you that I'm trying to solve this NLP use case sentiment analysis and I'm discussing about the forward propagation, how forward propagation will take place. Okay. So let us go ahead and try to understand. Now, suppose I have these four words. Okay. And this is my output. Now at time T is equal to one, my first word goes inside this particular hidden layer. Now, suppose in this particular hidden layer, I have hundred neurons. Okay, I have 100 neurons. Now what will happen? The first thing that will happen is that this input, this word, and I can represent this word into some dimensions that is of RD. So I can represent this with some vector, you know, this word I can represent with some vector. And how to do that? I'll show you that in the practical application. If you know about word to vec, TF, IDF, um, bag of words there, each and every word we try to represent in the form of vectors, right? So similarly, this particular word will be represented for some D dimension vector. Then we assign weights because this is how in ANN also happens, right? We have our input, then we multiply the weights and then we give it to the hidden layer. So this hidden layer is having 100 neurons, right? So suppose this is having 100 neurons. So I will try to multiply my input layer. That is whatever the input data I'm coming along with this particular weights and I'll get the output O1. Okay, now this is at time is equal to one. At time is equal to one, I'm just passing one input right now. Okay, so let us go ahead and write the first function of O1. So O1 can be written over here as, okay, so here I'm actually, now, and understand one more thing guys. Here is all my hidden neurons. And you know that in hidden neurons, I apply some activation function, right? Like ReLU, like uh, tan H, like sigmoid activation functions. So this O1, will basically be some function, right? I'll apply some kind of function over here. And in this function, we'll try to multiply W and X11. That is what we do, right, in ANN. We'll multiply the inputs along with the weights in each and every hidden neuron. So here, I can basically write it as XI1 multiplied by W, okay? So this will be my output one. Okay, this will be my output one pretty much clear. Okay, and this is important. This is what is happening in the forward propagation, right? Now, once this output one is computed, now again, go back to this architecture. Now, this output one has to be given to the same hidden neuron, right? So this hidden neuron again will come over here. 
okay and same number of hundred hundred hidden neurons will be coming but at time is equal to t is equal to 2 my next word that is x12 will get passed now when it is getting passed the same weights will get assigned over here remember guys weights will get updated only in the back propagation not in the forward propagation so in my t is equal to 2 the same weights will get assigned my uh, new input will be x12 but i also have an output right this output is also going to the neuron and when I'm passing this output, I'll assign some different weight. Okay. And there are a lot of weight initialization techniques, guys, which I've already discussed in my artificial neural network. So this is my W dash, which will get initialized for this particular output. Now, how will my function look when I'm using this data and this data and I'm getting the output O2. Now, my O2 will be nothing but function. First of all, I'll multiply X12 into W. So this will be my X12 into W plus c i'm doing the addition operation for this one also now right so o1 multiplied by w1 and this is very very important guys because this is what happens in the forward propagation in the backward propagation again the derivative of all this will get calculated so that is how you know and, and remember over here o2 is completely dependent on this x12 and o1 and that is how sequence is actually kept the sequence information is actually kept now at time is equal to 3 that is t is equal to 3 again now this particular output will go back to the same hidden neuron so o2 is going back over here again this weight will get initialized over here okay w dash and it will be same okay and in this case in the third time t is equal to 3 x13 is getting passed right now in when x13 is getting passed again this will be the same weights over here and this will continue till the end of the statement so my o3 again i can write it as my o3 will nothing be but function of uh, x13 w plus o2 into w dash okay so this is my w dash and and uh, this is my o3 now similarly finally my o4 which is this output will be nothing but function of uh, x14 multiplied by w plus o3 into w1 and this is where you are getting all your output 1 output 2 output 3 output 4 uh, in the forward propagation this is how the function is getting computed and guys it will just stop in this fourth cycle right t is equal to 4 and sentences may have any lengths right so for the first state sentence that you see over here it will go till t is equal to 4 now you can see over here t is equal to 4 right now after you get this output function then finally we pass through this sigmoid because since this is an uh, suppose this sentiment analysis is having an output as 0 and 1 so i have to use a softmax right over here so this will be my softmax activation function and when i'm doing this and another weight will get assigned to this like w double dash okay and then this will classify and this will give us our y hat predicted value so this is my y hat predicted value and then i go and compute my loss function where i will try to subtract this two value and our main aim is to reduce this particular value now once i have done this in the backward propagation what will happen that will be discussed in the next video but just understand that how the forward propagation has happened we have started from here we have gone till the end you know so just with respect to one statement each and every word is can be represented into vectors of some d dimensions and that depends on the type of vocabulary the number of words that are present in that vocabulary so it is very very important how you can actually implement that but in forward propagation this is how it goes this main output basically means that unless and until the statement does not get over this will be getting passed to the same hidden layer and always remember guys over here the output 4 will be dependent on x14 and output 3 output 3 will be dependent on x13 and output 2 output 2 will be dependent on this and this value so by this the sequence information is always maintained you know it is not discarded which was the problem in some of the techniques that we had like in bag of words tf idf uh, in other techniques but in this technique the sequence information is not removed so this is basically being used in many many important applications where you know the output from that particular chatbot from that google assistance is very very important based on our statement that we usually speak you know and this functions that we have derived over here this is very very important again guys because in the back propagation we'll try to find out the derivatives of this
right so i hope you understood this particular video one more change now i have to do is that guys always remember for each and every hidden neurons when time is equal to two three and four you can see that one output is going so to in order to change this in the input also i'll make an output zero and here the weights are initialized this output zero is nothing but it will be some zero padded values or randomly initialized values initially okay then i'll try to multiply this along with this i'll try to add this also in my first layer so here i can basically write it as x11 w plus o0 w dash right so i can write it like this so yes this was all about this particular video i hope you liked it please do subscribe to the channel share with all your friends whoever require this kind of help it is very important to understand all these things guys so that you'll be able to implement a whole lot of things in recurrent neural network so yes i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all